Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.4 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to tutorial number one, Startup. This is the first in my new series of tutorial videos on the Mirage 2000C. It's been quite a long time since I've flown this aircraft, and Razbam have embarked on a really large refactoring of this aircraft. It has a lot of, of new and corrected functionality since the last time it fl I flew this. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun getting to grips with this aircraft. Um, so here, today we are on uh, Cyprus at Pathos, and I'm going to go through the standard startup for the aircraft. You see it here in uh, a fairly normal Greek livery, uh, complete with a QRA loadout. Uh, I've got a centerline fuel tank, I've got two Matra Super 530D semi-active radar homing missiles, and two Matra Magic 2 infrared missiles on the outer pylons. I'm also carrying the Eclair pod for additional flares. Uh, so this is, yeah, probably a pretty standard QRA loadout for the aircraft. Uh, uh, there are a few different checklists and procedures that you can use to start up this aircraft. I'm going to be referencing the checklists found in the Chuck's Guide for the M2000C, because uh, they're pretty close to what I do anyway, and uh, I rather like the Chuck's Guide. Um, first, let's take a quick look at the pilot body we have here in the cockpit. I think it's really very nice. Um, Razbam are quite good at creating these. Uh, and also, I, I like the detail that it has the correct patches for the Greek Air Force here uh, and the Mirage 2000. Uh, very, very cool. Sadly, we're going to have to hide him. Right shift and P gets him out of the way. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, also, my throttle was in a funny position there. But in any case, we're going to do the before startup checklist, and that will make sure that everything is as it should be. So very first thing we do is we check the fly-by-wire switches. Uh, the, oh, it's actually down here. Fly-by-wire gain mode switch should be f up in the normal position and guarded. It is. Uh, we then have the uh, G-limiter switch. It can be up for light air-to-air -air loadouts, or it can be down for charges, for heavier loadouts. Uh, today, we actually need it in charges. Uh, we have the spin switch up here, uh, normal or uh, real, I think is how you pronounce that. Do not touch this switch. Uh, once you cycle it out of the normal position, it cannot be reset by the pilot. It can only be reset by the ground crew. So we visually inspect this switch. We do not touch it. Uh, if I flip this down, we're, we're done for today, sadly. Um, we then want to make sure that our uh, flight control and slat switches are all in the correct positions. So Pelez forward and auto. Sori uh, should also be forward. BECS should be in the middle in automatic. Uh, we want to make sure that our radios are powered up. So the uh, the VUHF radio, this one here, is called the green radio. One right click puts it into FF. That's its normal operating mode. We then have the UHF radio forwards here. One right click puts it into Marche, which is on. And that's the correct position for our two radios. Uh, the drag chute lever should be all the way forwards and locked. That means we're not going to accidentally deploy our drag chute. And throttle needs to be all the way back in stop. You'll see that I accidentally moved it forward and it's now in idle. Uh, we can press this red button to unlock it and allow it to move all the way back to cut off. Uh, bingo selector. On the right hand side here we have the bingo selector in kilograms. Let's set it to 1200 for today's flight. Next, we're going to close the canopy. Uh, left control C will bring the canopy down and close it. That's it, down and locked. And we can now turn on the master battery switch up to Marshy. And you'll see that a bunch of our displays and warning lights now come to life. Um, now, this is kind of personal preference. You have this AVSO on, SON switch. This is for the audio warning system. Some people leave this off during startup. It makes the, the startup a little bit less bingy and bongy. Uh, I personally like to have it on uh, during everything so that I get warnings if something changes on my caution panel. So into the forward position, and we're then going to get the master caution warning. We can push the audio warning reset here, and it will go silent. Uh, and that's the that's the position I quite like to have it in. Uh, before engine start, we turn on the emergency hydraulics pump. That's now on. That warning light goes out. Uh, and now we're getting ready for engine start. Uh, now everything to do with the engine start is is done uh, here in this panel. This is the engine startup panel. Uh, so the very first thing we're going to do 
uh, is we're going to choose which ignition system we're going to use. So it can be in the right or the left. Middle position is the start system disabled, so that's not going to work for you. Uh, I think in the real aircraft they would cycle this, you know, like left on odd days, right on even days or something. I'm just going to leave it in right, make sure it's in left or right. We're then going to uh, open the fuel cutoff. That's the master fuel cutoff there. It should be to the right and then covered. We then have the right and the left boost pumps. They need to be on. And then there's the starter pump here, but it automatically is flipped on when you open the start switch cover. Um, so when the time comes, we're going to open this and press the starter button for one second, uh, and that will begin the engine start. Engine instruments are all on the right-hand side here. We have the RPM gauge here. We have the exhaust temperature gauge here, and we have the fuel, fuel flow in kilograms per minute. We're going to monitor these. Uh, during startup, we'll allow this to pass 11%, and then we will advance the throttle just enough to get it out of the cutoff and into idle. So let's go ahead and do that. Open the cover, press for one second, and release. Cover automatically closes. It's uh, spring-loaded. Okay, RPM's moving. Passes 11%. We're going to move this just out of cutoff and into idle. You don't want to move it too far forward or you can get a hung start. That's a good start. And we should stabilize at around about 50%. Perfect. That's good. That's a normal start. And you'll see that at that stage, most of the uh, warning lights on the warning and caution panel have gone out. That's good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to align the INS. Uh, there are two ways of doing this. We have normal alignment uh, and we have uh, stored heading alignment. We're going to do the full normal alignment procedure today because the stored heading only works if the aircraft hasn't been moved. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that the INS operating mode is an N for normal. Uh, and we're then going to move the mode selector out of AR for aret or off into VEI, which is standby. One right click does that. Uh, we're now in standby mode. That powers up the uh, the control head that we have up here, and we'll now do the rest of our setup uh, up here. So uh, you've got the parameters selector. Uh, there's various modes the display can be in. We want to be in L slash G for the long display, and then one switch to the left gives us the altitude. Um, we're going to put it in lat, uh, lat long for now. Now, the aircraft needs a waypoint to align from, and that waypoint needs to con uh, contain your current position. So if I bring up my kneeboard and I flip a couple of pages forward, you can see that on our kneeboard we have our initial position noted here. So I'm going to create a waypoint called Waypoint 20. I'm going to use that for alignment. So we can press Prep here, and it will blank the uh, current waypoint uh, window. We're going to enter 20. This is Waypoint 20. Waypoint 20 is currently blank, so we can go ahead and enter whatever we want. Um, during these inputs, uh, you can press 1 to select the left window, and three to select the right window. Uh, in this particular display, in lat long display, the left window is latitude and the right window is longitude. So we're going to press one to select the left window. We're going to press two for north and it confirms we're going to enter a northing and we're going to enter the full position as noted here on the kneeboard. So three, four, four, two, nine, five, four. And we press insert. You'll see these lights were lit up. You've got insert and effage, I think it is, which is just delete. And it, it confirms the full thing to us here. Although note the display only shows the first five digits. It does in fact take the entire entry though. So uh, just be aware of that. And uh, next we're gonna press number three to select the right window. We're gonna press six for easting and we're gonna enter zero, three, two, three, zero, zero, eight, six, insert. And again, it confirms the whole thing to us there. Lastly, before we begin alignment, we need to enter our current altitude. So set the selector to Alt. In this mode, the left window is in feet, the right window is in meters. Uh, we have our kneeboard in meters here, so I'm going to press 3 for the right window. I'm going to press 1 for a positive entry. I'm going to get Enter 1, 6, Insert. That's now confirmed. I'll put it back to lat long for now. And I'll close my kneeboard. <clears throat> okay, so to begin alignment, we simply uh, move the uh, the operational mode to STS to give us status, and then we move the actual INS mode to ALN for alignment. Just like that. You'll now see that align is flashing, uh, and we have zero displayed here. We need to press validate to say that we're happy to proceed, 
and you'll then see that we have 100 displayed here. Now the system will count down from 100 to 0. When it reaches 0, full alignment is complete. Uh, the first thing that the alignment system does is it does what's called a class 4, a course alignment. That takes 4 minutes. Once that's done, uh, instead of align, you'll have pret, which means ready. It'll be a flashing pret, in fact. And then it will display the further stages that it goes through along with a countdown for each stage. That will take a further four minutes. So we're going to leave that running just now and we're going to continue with our startup. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to power up our displays. So first we'll power up the HUD. There's a little switch here just on the bottom edge of the HUD control panel. One right click puts it into powered on and we can hear the avionics fan for the HUD come on. After a short delay, we'll get an image on the HUD, and that's that done. Next is the heads down display called the VTB in this aircraft. We can right click its power switch. We'll hear another avionics fan come on, and after a short delay, it will display an image as well. Uh, and that will be those displays up and running. While we're waiting for the VTB, we can power the radar. Um, so this is the radar's main power switch here. It's currently in A for aret or off. It one right click puts it into PCH, uh, which is uh, preheat, uh, préchauffage. Uh, while it's in preheat, we'll have a flashing P displayed in the VTB, so we know that that's happening. Uh, the radar has to be warmed up before it can be powered on. Next, we'll turn on the uh, radar altimeter. One right click here. And then we can change our altitude, altitude source using this switch here. It's currently all the way up, which is barometric. One left click puts it into the middle position. That is for uh, the radar altimeter. Uh, note that our heading tape is currently aligning. That's part of the INS alignment procedure. And the, uh, the counter is now counting down from 100 as well. Uh, next, we'll power up our uh, radar, sorry, not radar, radio um, <laughs> navigational uh, aids. We have TACAN and ILS here. Uh, we're currently at Pathos, so we'll enter the values for that. Pathos is 7 Niner X ray on TACAN. So let's uh, right click the right knob to put it into transmit and receive, and then we can roll the mouse wheel on left or right um, uh, knobs to set the values for tens or, or digits. So we want, oops, 7. 9. And that's now set. We can confirm that our TACAN is working by switching our HSI to TACAN mode. We get a pointer and we get a distance. So we can confirm that's working correctly. Uh, ILS will set by switching it from ARET to MARCHE with a right click. And then uh, again, mouse wheel over these knobs. We want 108 decimal niner zero. And that's the ILS set for that as well. Uh, next, we're going to set up our electronic warfare systems. We want to make sure that the master mode is in standby, VEL, and we can then power on the jammer, the RWR, and the missile approach warning system. And we can also set our flare dispenser here into semi-automatic mode, and that's ready for use. Looking up at the RWR, we can now confirm that it has indications and the status lights for the various electronic warfare systems. So that's working correctly. Uh, next, we're going to set up and test our flight controls. You'll note that we have flight control indicators down here for the rudder and for the, uh, the main surfaces on the wings. Just checking the rudder, you can see that indicator moves. We're then also going to exercise the flight controls by moving the stick through a series of uh, movements. We want to make sure that the hydraulics are all warmed up and that our flight controls are free uh, and working normally, because otherwise it's quite possible to get a fly-by-wire system test failure. Uh, that's actually fairly common, especially uh, when it's cold outside. I don't think it's particularly cold today, but anyway, it's best to be careful. So, next thing we're going to do is run the autopilot self-test. That goes into there, we get two flashing lights, we get the master caution, and you'll see the autopilot system status lights are all flashing like mad. Uh, that's how we know that's a good test. That can go back to off, and we can close the cover, and we will cancel the master caution there. Next, we're going to do the uh, fly-by-wire test. We can open this cover for this right-hand switch, and we can either move it forwards into test, that does the full fly-by-wire test, or we can move it aft into C or court position, and that is for the short test. Uh, today, we're going to do the full fly-by-wire test. So, into forward, we have a red flashing light while it's running, You'll see that the uh, master caution lights will flash for various systems, and the control indicators will be jiggling up and down while that's happening as well. Let's cancel the master caution. 
We can go to the F2 view as well, and we can see the fly-by-wire system going through its self-test. Once that test is complete, we will get a green pass light on this panel, or we'll get a solid red light indicating that the test in fact failed. Green light, test passed. We can now move this switch back into the middle position and cover that. Um, so, oh, but we still have decol. Hmm, interesting. Why do we have decol? Uh, decol would mean that our takeoff um, um, configuration is not quite correct. That's normally on until the fly-by-wire system is passed. I'm not quite sure. We'll continue anyway. We'll follow the um, we'll follow the rest of the startup, and maybe it will become uh, apparent what has happened there. Uh, pito heat now needs to come on. Move that switch forward. Ah, okay, it was because of the pito heat. So, pito heat is now on and that switch is covered. We're now going to uh, uncage the standby ADI by pushing in this switch and rotating it down. Uh, we still have a flag, that's because the gyros for the standby are not on. So we move down to here. This switch here needs to be moved into the middle position. That will spin the gyros and the warning flag now disappears. Um, next, we can power up the IFF system. Uh, this is the IFF control panel here. We want to right-click to put it into sector mode, and that's it then powered. We would then have the option of, of entering the IFF code we're using for today. Um, you'll note that um, the INS is proceeding with its alignment. It's now into uh, stage two. That means it'll be finished probably in the next one or two minutes. Uh, it won't take that much longer to complete that. Oh, uh, one thing I did forget to do was to set up the uh, external lights. We want to move this switch all the way forward for nav lights, and then this one forward for anti-collision. Uh, we then go to the external view and confirm uh, the lights are all on as they should be. And at this stage we can get the ground crew uh, to remove the uh, the wheel chocks. Let me actually make sure that the parking brake is on first. It is. Yeah, this thing that looks like a Citroen uh, handbrake is the parking brake. Uh, and it's confirmed with park on the master caution down there. So, ground crew can now remove the wheel chocks. Excellent. Um, so just waiting a little bit longer now for the INS alignment. Looks like it's just about done. There we go. Solid pret. Alignment is complete. So with that done, we can now put the system back into normal operational mode, and we can switch the mode selector to nav. Uh, with it in nav mode, you'll note that our main ADI is now aligned, and we have pitch bars on the HUD. That's exactly what we should expect to see. That is all completely normal. Um, at this stage, we could um, basically taxi. That's uh, that's the aircraft ready for taxi. So at this stage, we would enable the nose wheel steering. You'll see that we get uh, DIRAV showing up on the panel down here. Uh, FRAIN means brakes are applied, by the way. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we can see the parking brake is applied. So I'm going to push and hold the... Uh, the Toe brakes, going to release the parking brake because the aircraft will roll on idle power. And you'll notice that when I release the toe brakes, the brakes light goes out. We now have no further warnings. Uh, and we have, we can confirm that nose wheel steering is working. Uh, and we can confirm left brake, right brake. All of that looks normal. I'll just hold it on the brakes now. So that is um, basically the full startup. I guess the other thing we would do is right clicking this switch here would put the taxi light on. Uh, and you would normally do that before taxi. Uh, and actually, one last thing I would tend to do is I would switch the radar to silent mode. So, preheat is complete. You can see silent indicated here, and the antenna has started moving. Looking pretty good. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. That's a, bit, a pretty standard uh, startup for the Mirage 2000C. That's what it looks like. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. Uh, you also have the option of joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew by pressing the join button below. Really appreciate those of you who've already done so. Big shout out to Harish Rajan, Leo Netzel, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, JR Walker, Chandro Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinkertan, Belly Tapani Corpicanas, Tiger Moto, and Pink Floyd. Thank you all very much for your support. I'll see you all 
next time. <laughs>